That's a hard word. Never. I will never. I would never, never, ever, 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 never, ever. <laughs> Hi there, it's your girl Noella, and if you're new to this channel, I help aspiring and current college students like you figure out what this college thing is all about. So in today's video, I have my very close friend, Rosie. <laughs> I always tell her she's the only rose in my garden. So anyways, she's going to be sharing with you today her college journey. So Rosie, can you give us a little background about yourself? Hi everyone, she already introduced me, but my name's Rosie. I went to the same high school as her, which is uh, Lynn English. English High School. Go Bulldogs. And, go Bulldogs. And currently I go to college at Pine Manor College. I'm a double major in uh, biology and psychology. Okay. <laughs> okay, girl. So we both went to Lynn English High School and we both graduated in the same year. Mm -hmm. And then you went from high school straight into Pine Manor College. Can you tell us how that experience was for you? transferring from high school straight into a four-year private college? I think for me, the experience was very different because I think in my case, I had the opposite of what most people get, where it's like we went to a huge high school mm -hmm. full of like 2,000 students. Yeah. And then I ended up going to a college with about 500 students. Mm -hmm. So it was a change getting used to the smaller environment knowing like this is a school where everybody knows each other. Mm -hmm. In that sense, I felt that was different. Yeah. So was it an easy transition for you going from a high school with over 2,000 mm -hmm. um, students to a college with over 500 students? It was a fairly easy transition, but it has gotten easier as the years progresses. Mm -hmm. So it's like my freshman year was a lot more difficult than my senior year, just because you're more experienced, you've mm -hmm. been here before. It's like you're doing the same thing yeah. over and over year after year, just mm -hmm. with more progress. So I think freshman year was a bit more difficult, but that's just because traditionally freshman year is Pretty always much. challenging. Pretty much. Like when you're a freshman in high school, you're taking classes with all freshmen. True. But in college, you could be in a class with seniors and That's juniors true. straight from your freshman That's year. True. That's true. Yeah. So can you tell us a little about how high school was for you? Like the experience? I know you came in as a junior. So how was it for you starting as a junior instead of as a freshman? Yeah, I did come in as a junior, but that was because I just came here from Nigeria where I had been going to a Catholic high school. Mm -hmm. So coming to the U.S. and going to a public school, I think that was a big difference for me because it was the first times I never had to wear a uniform. It was a bigger school. It was more freedom just because not only you're in a different um, country, but now you're in a public school system. Would you say it was easier to make friends in high school at that time when you came? Because you pretty much came and you had two more years to graduate. Mm -hmm. And going to college, pretty much you were learning the new language. The the accent is definitely mm -hmm. different. Um, the pronunciation, the writing sure. itself is different. Like the way we spell things is the British way in mm -hmm. Nigeria compared to how the Americans spell it or pronounce it. So would you say that was difficult for you because you were trying to pretty much get acclimated with your surroundings and everything and also get good grades in school and just flourish as a student? I would say it was difficult, but not as difficult as I've heard most people mm. have it. Because like, fortunately for me, like coming to a country where the primary language is English, my yeah. first language and only language which I speak properly is English. So I think in that part, it was kind of easy to get used to the new spellings and new mm. pronunciations. I did have a lot of corrections in my oh, honors yeah. English class with mm -hmm. my spelling. Like colors, I still spell with the U. Thanks, Miss Mosha. Always. Mosho. Thanks, Miss Mosha. <laughs> But yeah, I do think it was it was a difficult period, but that had a lot to do with adolescence, mm. family, other issues yeah. going on at the time. The transition was fairly easy. Mm. And once you actually got to meet people, you met a lot of people who were very much like you. Like, I think that was a good thing in our school was that there was a huge immigrant population yes. and not yes. just an immigrant, an African immigrant population and West African because we're all very different. And also similar, similar too. Yeah. And that's what um in Etienne's video I was talking about, like she what helped her really, especially in not your community college, was finding her tribe. Mm -hmm. So finding the people that you actually click with will help make your transition better and easier and smoother. So let's talk about campus. Do you stay on campus? Do you have a car on campus? How does that work in general? 
my residential experience in college has been quite interesting. So I've always been uh, living on campus, mm -hmm. but my freshman year, I stayed in the traditional um, dormitory housing with a roommate in a room. And then I was like, I don't really want to do this. Like I like people, but I don't like living with strangers. So I applied to be an RA at my school and I got right. the RA position that I've done for two years and I'm going to do for one more year um, till I graduate. So I get free housing and uh, free food. But free is not free. You have to work for it. <laughs> but free food. Yes. No, free food. So it's like my, I don't just live in my dorms. Mm -hmm. I'm also an employee of that mm -hmm. dorm. So it's like you're living where you work. And that can be hard sometimes having students who are your friends who live in the dorm, but oh, yeah. still enforcing the rules, managing um, classes with conducting programs, doing your boards and door tags, mm -hmm. hosting events. Like, you could get knocks on your door at 12 p.m. at night because roommates are fighting. Wow. Yeah, it's quite serious. And uh, about the other question, I do have a car on campus. And because of the location of my campus, that makes it so easy for me because I'm able to commute to my work. I'm able to commute to internships and just simply come home or leave Boston whenever I want. Yeah. Does it have like extra charges or extra fees, like the parking space? Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Like um, every semester I have to pay for parking. And then of course, if you have a car, you know the regular cost that comes with it, the okay. insurance, the service and the payment. So because of that, I do have to work extra hours to make those minimum payments. But what I try to do is over the summer breaks when I'm less busy, is you work a lot harder mm. so you can work a lot less yes, during school. the school session. Yeah, that's very so, smart. Did you change your major? In a way, yes. Okay. So can in you way, shed yeah. light on how you change your major, why, and the process? Okay. Um, long story, but as a kid, I always knew I wanted to work in the medical field. I always wanted to be like a doctor, just a general practitioner. And then um, over the courses and uh, middle school, high school, I started leaning towards more pharmacy. Mm. And then when it was time to actually get into college, I applied as undecided. Whoa. Okay. So I went into college with no clue on what no. I was going okay. to do. I went to my advisor's office and they're like, what classes are you looking to take? What do you want to major in? And I'm like, I know I like biology. I know I like psychology. But I was really leaning towards the science part. So my advisor was my intro to psych uh, first year professor. So she convinced me to sign up for her class. And I took that first psych class and I absolutely fell in love with it. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to be a psych major. And then by my sophomore year, I'm like, I know I like psych, but I still like mm. bio. I mm. really am drawn to that science. I really want to do bio. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to major in psych and get my minor in bio. Okay. And then by junior year, <laughs> <laughs> you just get it. <laughs> by junior year, I'm like, you know what? I like both of them equally, so I'm just gonna become a double major in psychology and biology. Oh, you go, girl. That's that's a lot of work being a double. A major. lot of changes. Yes. Like I think people shouldn't be scared to go into college not knowing what to yes. do and make those changes along the way. Yeah, like you said, you knew you wanted to do biology and something in the medical field, mm -hmm. and I. I know like a lot of students go in um, undecided and also a lot of students change their major. I think sure. I was reading somewhere and it said 70% of college students end up changing their major twice. Yeah. I think or even more than. A lot than. of people change about four times. Yes. I changed my major about four times. <laughs> so it's okay not to know exactly what you want to study or major in in college. College is a place where you figure things out and that's why you're going to college. That's so true. just go there with an open mind, take the courses that you think you're interested in and figure things out. So, so do you have any future plans? So in general, I have always had the idea of going to med school. And now I'm definitely sure that I do want to study psychiatry. Based on the internship, which I just completed my junior year, I started a research at the hospital about using shared decision making and psychiatry. So over this last year in college, I'm going to finish that research and hopefully I can get a type of a publication or a conference from it. Um, aside from that, I do have plans to work 
<laughs> a lot. A lot. Like, I definitely need to get a nice job that would look great on my resume, give me great experience yeah. in, like, my majors and uh, still looking out for possibilities for that. And then my long-term goal is med school. That's a huge plan. Yeah. It's something I need to prepare for before I take. It's something I need to take the time off to yeah. study for to say for and just to prepare yeah to be prepared mentally like there's true. really no rush to it true it's like a journey yes. it's not it's not a sprint it's exactly. more like a marathon because med school is a lot of money, money and also right. even time. taking the test you have yes. limited chances to get in true like i true. think it's about seven a lifetime oh twice a goodness. year there's a strict limitation so it's like you don't want to just keep failing these mm. tests to get in because then again it doesn't look good yeah on good on you yeah. Wow. Like they advise you take like six months off to study before the big yeah, test. Big test. That's that's smart, Joe. Well, thank so you very much for coming today and sharing with us your college experience. Are there any tips that you would like to give our current aspiring college students? I just say be prepared to work harder than you mm. ever have in your life. Like you're most likely no longer going to be relying on your parents. Mm. You're going to have to claim your independence. You're going to have to work hard to get stuff for yourself, even if it's paying for classes, mm. paying for books. Just the general cost of living on campus can be quite expensive. And I think most people go in would not realize that, oh, I might still have to hold a job in mm. order to eat, in order to get around. Because like the cafeteria foods, not it yeah, and then like if you're you're still young so like you want to do other stuff you still want to go out you still want to maybe explore the city you're looking for mm -hmm. and that's another great option like choose a school you know you will enjoy the mm -hmm. surroundings like if you know you hate the cold maybe new york isn't the best place for Seriously. you to go to college if you like to go to the beach maybe California is the best place for you. So after classes, when you're stressed and you're crying before your next test, you can cry at the beach. <laughs> so thank you very much for those tips. I learned something new today and I hope you learned something new. So don't forget to subscribe for new college videos and for more questions related to college and specifically Pine Manor College, you can contact Rosie on Instagram at... R O W Z E Y one Rosie one. Okay, <laughs> Rosie one on Instagram. And thank you very much for joining us today. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.